Good evening and welcome to this edition of Just the News. Remember, we've shuffled the news about a little bit. So the COVID updates are in the middle of the show. Also at the end of this entire bulletin, in a sort of old school style, like our parents would ask us questions about the news after we watched it as children on Doordarshan. I'll ask you one quiz question at the end of the bulletin. Let's see if you have the answer. All right, let's get straight to it, to the news at this point. The Supreme Court on Friday has refused to cancel the bail granted by the Delhi High Court to student activists Natasha Narwal, Asif uh, Tana and Devangna Kalita. Remember, they were released from jail after a year last night. This comes after the Delhi police approached the Supreme Court immediately to stay the Delhi High Court order. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, who is the lawyer for the government of India, who is appearing on behalf of the Delhi police in this case, said others who have been charged against UAPA, which is the Indian Terrorism Act, uh, will be moving bail pleas based on this Delhi High Court order. The Delhi police also told the Supreme Court that the High Court completely lost sight of the evidence and statements that were produced before it and had arrived at this judgment without considering that a sinister plot of mass scale riots were being hatched by the accused. The bench eventually, uh, you know, stated in its order in the Supreme Court that it will issue notice to all of the parties to respond. But it said, let counter be filed in four weeks, list in a non miscellaneous week. This order will not be treated as precedence by any party before any court. So basically, the three people who are out on bail will remain out on bail, but the order in that particular case cannot be treated as precedence in any other case as of now, as per the Supreme Court. The trio were arrested uh, in connection with the Delhi riots and were charged with the Terror Act. Now, three days after Twitter, uh, online news portal Wire, several journalists and Congress leaders were booked for allegedly promoting enmity between religions after the Ghaziabad incident. The Uttar Pradesh police has summoned Twitter India's managing director, Manish Maheshwari, according to a report in the Hindustan Times. Now, to bring you up to speed, if you don't know, an elderly Muslim man in Loni was allegedly assaulted um, and his beard was cut off, the video of which went viral on the internet. The Uttar Pradesh police went forward to then rule out the communal angle and said the attackers uh, were not, this was not a communal attack. It was because they were unhappy about some amulets that they had bought from the victim. The victim had, on the other hand, uh, given statements to various media houses that he was asked to chant slogans and this was a communal attack. According to the Hindustan Times, Akhilesh Mishra, the investigating officer in the case, has said notice has been issued uh, to the Twitter um, officer late on Thursday evening under the regular provisions of the Criminal Procedure Court and he's been asked to appear within the next seven days to record his statement. The FIR against Twitter and eight others have been filed for provocation of rioting, promoting enmity between groups, um, outraging religious feelings, mischief, criminal conspiracy and common intent. Twitter has been accused of not removing misleading content linked to the incident. The charges of the social media giant include intent to promote uh, rioting, promoting enmity and criminal conspiracy. Now, if you remember yesterday, I told you about how the government is considering uh, declassifying Twitter as an intermediary, which means it will lose certain protections. This is one such example of losing that protection. It means that Twitter will now could now be held accountable for all of the material that's published on its platform as a publisher not as an intermediary, which it was treated under the law up until now. But of course, this matter will have to appear before a court and it's really a court that will decide whether or not Twitter should be held accountable for what is on its platform. The Indian Medical Association, which is India's Association of Doctors, staged a nationwide protest today against violence that doctors are facing. 350,000 doctors participated in this protest. Several doctors closed their clinics today in protest and memorandums were placed before the Prime Minister's office and several other ministries as well. In the statement, the IMA said, and I quote, We demand that the government enhance security features in every hospital and declare hospitals as protected zones. Currently, 21 states have their local laws, but we need a strong central law to protect doctors from violence. 
He said in one instance, 11 years have passed after a doctor in Nasik died of a head injury, but the person has still not been caught. There was a change introduced in the Epidemics Act due to COVID-19, but even then, 300 instances of violence were reported in 2020 alone. Doctors are laying their lives on the line. 750 have died in 2020 and 700 more have died during the second wave, end quote. On to updates now around COVID. India reported 62,480 new cases in the last 24 hours, 1,587 deaths in the last 24 hours. Now, this is the first time that the number of deaths per day has fallen below 2,000. The daily positivity rate is at 3.24%, which is below 5% for the 11th straight day. Total active cases in the country is less than 11, 8 lakh, the lowest in 73 days. Kerala recorded 12,469 cases, followed by Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Niti Aayog member Dr. V.K. Paul, who has been the voice of the government through this entire uh, COVID problem, on Friday said that studies have shown that chances of hospitalization are 75 to 80 percent lower in individuals who have been vaccinated. He said the possibility of such individuals needing oxygen support is about 8 percent and the risk of ICU admission is only about 6 percent in vaccinated people. Bharat Biotech, the manufacturer of Covaxin, has said that the company has not submitted its phase 3 data to the WHO. This comes after several reports that the company had submitted Covaxin's phase 3 data to the WHO on Wednesday. Remember, this data has not been made public. So no one has seen or peer-reviewed the efficacy data, which is the phase 3 trial data of Covaxin yet. Uh, there have been reports that Bharat Biotech will hold a pre-submission meeting with WHO on the 23rd of June. The company has refuted those reports as well and said that they are not true. In the meantime, we don't know the fresh dates of when this data will be made public. Remember, just last week, the government told us that this data will be submitted in the next seven to eight days. Well, it has been a week and we've not heard of this data yet. Last week, the US FDA rejected Bharat Biotech's emergency use authorization and several questions were raised about its phase three trials. Uh, and it said it would make its results public in July. Interim findings uh, of a Cero survey. Now, a Cero survey is a survey that actually uh, tracks the uh, infection and the resulting immuno response in the general population. This survey being conducted by the WHO, uh, specifically by AIMS in India, has said that the third wave in India might not affect children as has been feared so far. The Cero survey refers to the body's ability to mount a natural immune response to viruses. According to the study, it says that a large population of children, about 50%, had asymptomatic COVID infections already. Even before the second wave, children below the age of 18 in South Delhi had a seroprevalence of 73%, um, as below 18 years had 74%. So this means that if they have antibodies in their system already, they are not likely to be badly affected by another wave. Google CEO Sundar Pichai has announced that the company will provide an additional 113 crore rupees to build oxygen generation plants and train healthcare workers in rural India. Now, this is in addition to the 135 crore rupees announced in April this year, aimed at expanding the reach of public health information campaigns and supporting emergency relief work. Sundar Pichai tweeted, and I quote, Our hearts go out to those in India impacted by the ongoing COVID crisis and we continue for, to look for ways to help, end quote. Google will collaborate with two NGOs, Give India and Park, to install approximately 80 oxygen generating plants in rural locations. News now from the world of business. Petrol and diesel prices have risen again to record highs. Uh, this is the 10th hike this month. Uh, and the 26th hike since the 1st of May. Petrol now costs 103 rupees in Mumbai. Diesel is at 95 rupees and 14 paise. Petrol in Delhi is 96 rupees and 93 paise. In Bangalore or Bengaluru, it is a 100 rupees and 17 paise. Diesel in Bengaluru is 92 rupees and 97 paise. These are all time highs. A quick look at international news right now. The WHO has announced a new COVID variant 
uh, called Lambda, which was originally detected in Peru in August last year. According to the WHO, the variant is now present in 29 countries. And a majority of them are in Latin America, including Argentina and Chile. The WHO has classified it as a variant of interest and said it will be closely monitored. Remember, uh, the WHO has decided to give names to these variants, these COVID variants, to avoid them being uh, named from the country of origin. So the UK variant or the South African variant or the Indian variant, uh, which is now called the Delta variant. This is the Lambda variant, which is now uh, a variant of interest for the WHO. Kuwait has said it will allow non-citizens to enter the country from the 1st of August if they have been fully vaccinated with COVID vaccines that are approved by the country. Vaccines approved by Kuwait are Pfizer, the Oxford AstraZeneca, which is Covishield for us, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. Travellers will also have to take an RT-PCR test before flying and another one after a seven-day quarantine on arrival. Lingerie brand Victoria's Secret has decided to do away with its angels or its supermodels and its entire uh, Victoria's Secret fashion show, which was a global event in which supermodels would walk the ramp wearing very large feathered wings and very small lingerie along with gemstones um, and uh, jewellery. That, uh, that Victoria's Secret fashion show has now been scrapped and it will be replaced by seven new figureheads described by the company as accomplished women who share a common passion to drive positive change. Now, one among those seven women is India's own Priyanka Chopra. The brand has announced that this group of women symbolize empowering empowerment, including Priyanka Chopra, soccer star Megan Reno, and trans model Valentina Sampaio, among others. According to The Guardian, the chief executive of Victoria's Secret, Martin Waters, has said in a press conference, this is a dramatic shift for our brand. It is a shift that we embrace from the core. These new initiatives are just the beginning. We are energized and humbled by the work ahead of us. Remember, Victoria's Secret's fashion show was criticized greatly uh, for basically uh, objectifying women primarily from the male fantasy and the male gaze. This is an attempt by the company uh, to change gears specifically after it has been losing out quite a lot after the last two years since uh, singer Rihanna launched her own line of uh, lingerie that has been doing really well. An update now from the world of sports. World number two women's tennis player Naomi Osaka has withdrawn from the upcoming Wimbledon tournament as well. This comes after she withdrew from the French Open citing her struggle with depression and anxiety. In the French Open, remember, she was fined $15,000 and threatened with possible disqualification because she refused to attend the mandatory press conferences. She then talked about how these press conferences were uh, having a negative effect on her mental health and her ability to play the game. She withdrew from the tournament after that. According to AFP, Osaka's agent has said that she is now taking some personal time with friends and family. She will be ready for the Olympics and she's excited to play in front of her home fans in Japan. Rafael Nadal had announced that he is withdrawing from Wimbledon due to his health because he's listening to his body and to his team. With well, the first day of the World Test Championship uh, final between India and New Zealand in Southampton was called off today due to rain. Day two will begin at half past two India time tomorrow. Uh, the ICC has kept a reserve day to make up for time lost because of bad weather. And one piece of positive news before we leave you for the day, Indian origin judge Mahmood Jamal has been nominated to the Canadian Supreme Court by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He's also the first person of colour to ever have been nominated as a judge to the Canadian Supreme Court. Mahmood Jamal was born to an Indian family in Nairobi in 1967. He was raised in Britain uh, and his family moved to Canada in 1981. He's been serving as an appeal judge in, in the Ontario court since 2019. Justin Trudeau, in a tweet, said Justice Mahmood Jamal has a distinguished career throughout which he remained dedicated to serving others. He will be a valuable asset to the Supreme Court. That is why today I'm announcing his historic nomination to our country's highest court, end quote. Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Here's your quiz question. The WHO has uh, picked a variant of interest that is largely present right now in Latin America. What is the name of the variant? Shouldn't be too difficult. 
if you were paying attention during the bulletin. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when we were kids, my uh, dad would quiz us on the news after we watched the news in Doordarshan. It made us pay closer attention to what was going on around the world. I hope you enjoyed that quiz as well. Remember to check out our YouTube page and subscribe to our YouTube page. We have a lot of interesting conversations uploaded on the page. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.